Pro Group Racing presents Show Us Your Tips, July 21st, 2020, Kensington and Sandown Lakeside to look at. Viva, how are you travelling? Um, weekend was a long time ago. How was it? Not great. Yes, mate. Uh, yes, going going well. Um, yeah, can't complain, mate. Uh, lockdown's, lockdown's a bit of a drag, but uh, we're getting by. Yeah, all a bit of the same these days. At least there's some racing on, there's some decent racing on this afternoon for us to to look at. Uh, we'll kick off at Kensington where it is soft. It is windy again. So we saw the wind play havoc on the weekend um, at Randwick. It's now coming from the other way. So potentially, I think it'll, it'll still play similar to Kenzo. By the end of the day, you'll um, probably be wanting to run on down the outside. We kick off with the two year old boys uh, over the 1100 metres. Uh, interesting race. Did you in either of these two-year-old races? Did you have any thoughts on the trials? Yeah, look, mate. Um, a few interesting racing races there in the two-year-olds. Um, the first one at um, sorry, I'm just just finding my form guide now, mate. You caught me on the hop a bit there. That's right. Um, yeah, the first one in Sydney, I wasn't overly uh, taken with. I thought it was uh, the trials were a bit hard to get a line on. Um, so I kind of left that one alone, but uh, yeah, don't know if you had anything. No, I liked, um, I did like the style of the uh, governor. I mentioned, I think I mentioned it when it was in on the weekend, um, trialed nicely on pace both times. Uh, times weren't as good as a couple of the others that trialed over similar distances, but uh, looks a stylish horse, but I think there's a bit more here. Like, I think both these two-year-old races are going to be, I think they'll be good races, but I'd, I'm not quite sure uh, which way to play in either of them. Uh, if I had to have a horse at top, Probably Governor in the first. Uh, the, the girls' the version is race two. Again, now that, that was even trickier. Um, that was quite deep and a lot of um, yeah. unexposed. I, in, in the second one, I actually went for the uh, Cummings uh, Laurel Lynn. I thought, um, yeah, just looking through the form, it's for its last start and its only start. It ran six, but it started favourite in a race yeah. that was won by four moves ahead. Yeah. Um, I know it finished seven lengths off it, off them, but they put it out straight after that, which suggests to me that um, the tr and the trial prior to that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm expecting that they think it's got a little bit of ability and um, yeah, it just didn't come up that first <coughs> round. But yeah, won a really good trial um, up at Gosford uh, a few weeks back uh, by about four lengths. So I think this horse may have a bit of ability. The only sort of down factor is the, the gate 15, um, which is against it. I think if it draw if it draws well, it's probably closer to even money. So you're probably getting a bit of a price um, because of that. And J Mac uh, first up for Blue Colour is probably a good lead there as well. Um, yeah, happy to follow you there. I, th I think Sneaky Page would be better back on top of the ground, but uh, not a great deal of uh, interest in seeing what happens in either of the two year old races. Uh, race three is fifteen fifty benchmark seventy two. Uh, well, I was I was going to lead here with um, Canadian Spice back from Saturday's going okay. A uh, little bit of a drop in grade and gets close to control here, which hopefully is all right this time of the day. And, and was happy to lead that way. Um, we got a, a Masara horse in the market here. Is that how you is that the one you found? I have found that actually, mate. Um, gets the two kilo claim. Its first up run was was impressive, um, and its run before it went out for a spell was a, was a good win as well. Um, he, he found a lot in that first up start uh, when put under pressure. I think it'll um, it'll have derived a lot of benefit from that, and it'll be on pace as well. Um, and in a pretty open affair around the six dollar mark, I'm happy to play Mother's Mercy uh, to run a bold bold race. Race number four, benchmark 72 over the 1,300 metres. How have you lined all of these up? A few back from Saturday. Yeah, this was, yeah, this was a super, super, super tough race. Um, I kind of went towards Kinlock um, back from back from, back from that, that weekend company, um, back into this company. Um, it's it's run, three runs, this preparation being pretty good, I think. Um, one on soft going at Randwick after sort of being second off soft going um, against decent horses. And then last start, only finished two lengths behind the Big Easy and Fast Coney and Fast Coney won um, very stylishly on the weekend. So a run, at, if he runs up to that, um, could be the hardest to beat here. Uh, got the service of Huey Bowman aboard, drawn well. Um, 
yeah, I think Kinlock's the horse to beat in this. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, hopefully, I think by this time of day, we'll know the pattern. Then, then gate six, I, I guess Huey only needs to get him to the outside. And I think I think some the most talented horse in the race. Uh, and I uh, wasn't too interested in the rest. It's offshore, I think, is a genuine wet tracker. Might be a little bit dryish by the time we get there today. Uh, and I thought, uh, the only other one I thought might run a place at a big price if you're looking for one is Magella, who um, has some okay races to its name. Uh, race five, benchmark 72 over the 1800 meters. Uh, it doesn't get a lot easier. I, I think PK's legacy is going okay. I think it worked pretty hard and still hold, held on okay. Uh, last start sort of cut through the inside, had to make a, a long run and uh, still was in the finish. Uh, from gate 10, Tommy Berry rides Kenzo pretty well and we will be trying to get it just to the outside by this time. Uh, and the one that uh, was double figures last night, but the other one that will need further and is drawn okay by this time of the day, I'm hoping again, is Shuffler. Uh, was very much last night, and I think uh, its best run of this prep was last time at this track, and and um, hopefully give us a bit of a sight around that price as well. How do you line these up? Yeah, it wasn't overly keen on this affair, mate, at, at all. Um, thought this was a really tricky and tough race. Uh, I, I wouldn't rule out accountability um, to show something here. It's a weakest uh, race it's been the in, top. A, in a very long time. Yeah, it's the weakest race it's been in a very long time. And for that reason, I've kind of um, just looked at hit to maybe be run an improved race and uh, give a bit of a bit of a sight at value. Um, a pretty open affair that's uh, not overly keen on. Yeah, no problems there. Race six, 1550 over the benchmark, 72. Uh, I think the market's right. I think Yukon gets the best run and uh, it comes off a decent first up run. And Kate is back from the obvious in uh, coming back from the Saturday grade where it chased no compromise and Lakeen and, and that would, um, both of those have probably left this field, had a trial since uh, and J-Mac goes on. So yeah, like I said, the market's right. I'd probably back Katea slightly as I think it's a better horse, uh, but Yukon gets the better run. So take from that what you will. Have you split them up? Yeah, kind of went the same way as you uh, for the same reasons. Um, not a lot uh, between those two in this race. They look to be a few lengths better than the others based on the form. Um, and I and I slightly went for the five in front of the four as well. So, um, yeah, leaning the same way as you there, mate. And we wrap the day up with a benchmark 72 over 1,100 metres. How are you finishing up? Yeah, I think uh, Irish Angel looks the top tip here, mate. Um, yeah, set up well for this, drawn well. Uh, Bowman Waller, um, yeah, like it, even last start at Rose Hill, ran into traffic and still ran on. Looks probably the best bet of the day to me. Good way to finish. Yep, I agree. Um, might be, if I'm going to have one bet today, it'll be this one. I think it's it's a little bit closer from gate three. Um, Bowman will have it in the right spot. And I think it has uh, a bit on this field. Uh, obviously, Jenga was a, had that nice day booze, trialed okay since, but I think uh, I'd be backing, well, I did back Irish Angel on Saturday grade, and I'm happy to back it here. And I still think the price is good enough. Um, yep. And so for progroupracing.com, I'll make it my best in Sydney, and I'll make my value in a tough day for value shuffle up um, earlier in the day. Beaver, how, what's your best in value? Yeah, Irish Angel's my best in the last as well, mate. So I think it looks uh, hardest to beat on the day. And my value comes up in race three, number one, Mother's Mercy, around the $6.50 mark. Very good. Uh, we head down south uh, for Progret Racing. Come what are you? Check out Progret Racing for their free tips and extensive guides uh, down to Sandown Lakeside, where it is heavy. I believe there's still a bit of rain around down there. Uh, rails in a seven-metre mark. It is Lakeside, so... We'll see how that track does affect it, but we are looking for leaders most of the day, I believe. Um, and we kick off with a, a wide open two year old race, uh, which I'm, I will be watching as well. Uh, dipping your toe in here, yeah, probably similar to you, mate. I think it's um, super hard race. I, I did have a bit of a liking in the first for sharp response, the second favorite at seven dollars, but uh, gate 20. Um, <laughs> Just, yeah, that's a little bit of a worry. I think it comes in uh, probably about five barriers now, so gate 15 by the looks of it. Um, so still drawn quite wide. Um, but if it can go forward and, and get, get a spot, um, could be hard to beat. Race number two, benchmark 70 over the 2,400 metres. 
uh, where I, I'm going to, again, put Carrie on top. Uh, I think it gets a little bit of a, I think it's an easier lead than it did last time. It's it just ground home at the end of last start. It's had the 2100 metre run. 24 is probably what it's after. But um, I think hopefully track bias comes into play and it can hold on a bit better. A carry on top. The three that have had the uh, 2,500 metre lead up, which uh, always helps for the fitness here, especially in the wet, are Grey Khan, Julkia and uh, Julika and Fort Charles. And they um, are, are all probably worth, worth an each way ticket if you want to wait, play away from the, the favourites here. Uh, how, how do you split these up? Yeah, look, mate, so I've gone for just as soon from the Friedman stable. Um, came off a, a couple of month break last start and won at Sandown. Um, got a really good run in transit and just proved too strong for him. Um, hopefully from the barrier, it can sort of get out into a similar position, sort of roughly that one out, one back. Uh, Damien Thornton aboard. Um, there's a little bit of money floating around for it, around the 5.56 mark. I think it can also... Um, Derived some benefit from that start, uh, was over 2,400, so it's got, got enough fitness there, and I, if there's any improvement, it's going to be right in the finish. Race number three is the 1,400-meter benchmark 64. Uh, good luck, mate. I'm uh, <laughs> staying out of this. I, I, if I had to have a bet, maybe just Jake back onto the wet can improve a little bit with the claim, but uh, I don't think that will be happening with me in this race. Uh, did you like anything here? Um. I had a little bit of a liking for Tarath, um, okay. the uh, UK import. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it gets the third up now. Um, its first two runs in Australia have been really good uh, over the sort of 1,000, 1,100 at Geelong last start. I thought it wound up and came home quite nicely there. It gets out to the 1,400, which I think is more suited. And it ran a really good run um close behind Arapuni Princess, who backed that up with a nice uh, run following that um, the other day uh, when it got out of its ground and finished off nicely um, in, in a, on a track that uh, wasn't really suited by the back markers. So I think if it's, um, we can get a nice sit here and it's, if it's shown any improvement, I think it can be running home really strongly in this race. So I'm, I'm willing to have that at around the 650 mark as well. That's something, yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, Three-year-old benchmark 64 over the mile, uh, where I defaulted to the two that led him up in the uh, in the lead up to this race. So you assume and Peter Luna um, rolled along in the pace and brain the rest of the field, and I think this is pretty much the same setup here. Uh, Breeze and Luna had to sit outside lead, so uh, from the gate, probably have to do the same again. Um, but I think they'll fly out a finish, and they're both. You could probably build a book around both of them there. Uh, how do you see it? Yeah, I wasn't overly keen on this race. Uh, agree with you there. I think Breeze and Luna looks really hard to beat. Um, and I'd also probably just uh, be safe with a horse like Queen of Rocks um, if they can run on. Uh, it could be finishing finishing it off if they're, if they're running on um, down the middle of the track. Benchmark 78 is race five over the mile, the, the highest rated race of the day. Um, a couple back from Saturday grade, from decent Saturday grade as well. Uh, how have you, how do you want to play this one? Yeah, this one I've gone for the favourite, right you are. A uh, lot to like about this horse. Uh, last prep probably didn't show its best. But um, yeah, first up over at Caulfield uh, behind corner pocket. Uh, really liked the way that it hit the line. Um, this isn't as tough a race as that. Corner pocket was, was flying. Um it's, it's got a little bit of ability, this horse, and um, it, it's weighted up to that in this race as the top weight, and I think it's going to be um, one of the hardest to beat on the day. Yeah, well, the mark, again, the market's right here. I think that you found the right one there, and the, the only danger for me is Barbie's Fox, who comes out of the Lindout race at Flemington, um, and before that had formed a chassis who also won, pardon me, also came out and won in the weekend. Um, but, yeah. Right, you are absolutely fly second up and Saturday back to Wednesday. They're all nice ticks and shouldn't be far away. So I'll be riding along with you there. Race six is another one over the mile for a benchmark 64. Uh, we saw Too Much To Bear resume pretty nicely, sat outside lead uh, first up and um, actually won it, I think. Won't be winning this, mate, at scratch. I has. I've 
I haven't got that race in scratchings. Well, never mind. Well, who do you like? <laughs> uh, Aquilion here, mate. Uh, I think this is, is a very nice bet um, in this race. Uh, look, um, really solid form. They uh, rode it like the best horse last race at work. Last time out at Werribee in a maiden, um, was well found, well backed, and won like a horse that's on the way up with with a little bit of potential. Uh, first up when it resumed, it finished third behind Hosier, um, all, all bit half a dozen lengths off it, um, and Zidler, who have both uh, shown that they've got some ability outside of that, and it was only over 1500, uh, stepped up to 1600 last start and won its maiden. Um, it is a bit of a challenge to to come out of the maiden class and, and win races like this, but um, I think it's got enough ability in this race and as too much to bear it out um, is is a nice bet. Excellent. Uh, I thought the, the the other value one in the race, which has now come in a bit, uh, was Garen Piero with Craig Newt going on. Um, has a one or prep, but Froggy's flying. It was good enough to get uh, New Long Storm home for us at 50s on the weekend. Um, and maybe can do get this one rolling along from that gate as well. Uh, race number seven, 64, the sprint over the 1,200 metres, uh, where in a, in a race at what's still $6 a field, uh, I was happy to let this one go through the keeper. What about you? Yeah, tough race. I If I was going to have a bet, um, I'll be looking and having a check of the money if it comes for a run over from the Hawks stable resuming. Only had one start, was a nice start from that. Uh, Trialed in Sydney, um, last preparation, and showed a little bit of ability in those trials. Um, Hasn't been, I haven't seen at the trials this time in, but um, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye out on it to see if there's any money, more money for it. A um, little bit of money floating around for it now. Um, could be the horse to watch. And the staying race wraps up the day. Benchmark 70 for the fillies and mares over 2,100 metres, where I will, um, my old favourite, doesn't win a lot, but perennial gets the wet track to suit now. Uh, was pretty good last time, stuck on the inside and, and burrowed through. Uh, hopefully can, uh, I think it'll go back from the gates. The only concern, so we'll see how the track's playing by this time of the day. And um, with the booking of uh, Carleen Heffel on the top weight, we beat it home last time. I was happy to oppose that and take on Perennial. I think Nerve Not Verve is still going well, and this gets the absolute same setup I had last time to still hold on and be in the finish. Uh, and, and I thought they were the two from the lead-up that I wanted to stick with. Um, how are you finishing today? Yeah, I didn't, didn't really, wasn't excited too much about this race to be finishing off the day. Um you make good case for both of those two horses and hard to beat. And I, I think it's something at a bit of odds, uh, double figure odds, Cafe Rizou, um is a horse that could could continue to improve here, getting out further and more suitable distances. First two runs have been okay, finished off nicely. Um, yeah, 2100 should suit here and uh, could be a knockout chance. Excellent. Uh, let's wrap the day up for progroupracing.com today. Your best end value on a tricky Sandown Lakeside card. Yeah, my value bet comes up in race three, number 13, Taraf. Uh, I think it uh, presents really nice value here. And my best bet of the day comes up in race six, number 14, Aquilian. Uh, with the scratchings on, I'm, I'll make Perennial my best in the last there. Um, and my value, race four, number two, so you assume... Uh, should roll along and give you a very good sight for your money in the, the third. Uh, anything up north, Beaver? Yeah, there's only six races up north um, today, which is interesting. A really, really, really short, um, small car they've got up there and a lot of shorties. Um, so it's been really hard for me to pick something out here. I'm not going to go ahead and tip too many short prices up there. So what I did do is I just looked at a double, like a two horse, uh, all up, race five, number three, Kingston's here. Um, it's a short one, but I'll double that up and back it up into the last with um, race six, number two, I am a beauty. Very, that you are, Beaver. Good way to finish yes. today. Uh, uh, excellent. For progroupracing.com, this has been Show Us Your Tips. We will see everyone Thursday night for our Saturday preview, looking to Caulfield and Rose Hill. A comprehensive dive there. And then the next week we get a week off uh, because no one's racing in Victoria. So 
Uh, they've decided to take the week off down south. And from what I've seen, no one at all is happy about it. But um, not our problem, I guess. Uh, subscribe to us on Facebook and uh, what's the other place we do it? Twitter, that's the one. As well as Spotify, iTunes and the Progret Racing YouTube channel. Sign up for their mailing list, progretracing.com.au. And I'll chat to everyone soon. Catch you, Beaver. See you, mate.